my help to unmute the mic. Hello, everyone. <laughs> we got the basil in her floofy bed. We got the good old mixer. Got some bread going on to celebrate Canada Day for all my Canadian friends. I am not Canadian, but I will celebrate with you guys. So happy Canada Day. The hype is real. <laughs> I know we're at 49 followers. We only need one more, one more, and then we reach affiliate. After today's streaming, we'll have reached the view hours and the correct number of days for streaming. So we're only one person short. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. Yep, just one more. So the moment I hear that little notification pop up on the screen, we'll know. It'll be very exciting. So today on the stream, we are going to be making chocolate, chocolate chip cookies with white chocolate chips. So these cookies are not for somebody who is diabetic. They are not for somebody who is gluten sensitive. They are not for somebody who's on a sugar-free diet. Okay. These cookies are indulgent. They are rich and they are chocolatey. So they are very, very chocolatey. You're gonna want a glass of milk. I'm lactose intolerant and I have to have a glass of lactose free milk in order to eat these cookies. They're very delicious, very rich. If you're a part of our Discord, um, we have a Discord link and you can go to our Discord and you can get the recipe for it. So we're gonna jump right on in. Uh, something I didn't mention in the recipe, which I probably should have, is you want to make sure that you're using unsalted butter. A lot of people sometimes don't mention that. I probably should mention that. Typically when you're making cookies uh, or any kind of cake or anything, you want to make sure you're using unsalted butter because you're already adding salt into the recipe. So you don't need the salt from the butter. It's not going to mix like you want. Uh, you want to make sure you're using butter, not margarine in this case because margarine is not going to to combine the way you want. I am also splitting half vegetable oil, which, well not vegetable oil, but vegetable shortening, and butter to make it not as much butter. Uh, that will also help the cookies not to melt so fast in the oven. So when it chills in the fridge, it'll help with that to solidify a little faster. It'll be a much better thing. So. Uh, we may or may not get a lot of people in today. I know we've got a couple of our friends that we watch that are streaming. So uh, we might have a couple people pop in. If we don't, that's fine. We're just here to make our cookies. If we happen to get another follower, that's fantastic. If we don't, that's okay. We got another day. So uh, on Saturday, it'll be the 4th of July here in the U.S. Uh, I know we got a lot of drama going on here in the U.S. Um, but, you know, my husband is in the Air Force. Um, I support him and what he does. He is stressed out about his job all the time. But you know what? I am thankful for what he does because he gives me health care and he provides a roof over our head. So on Saturday for the 4th of July, I'm celebrating the fact that I am able to have a home. I'm able to buy ingredients and I'm able to be thankful for my husband. So Saturday I'll be doing a cookout be doing some burgers, maybe some hot dogs, um, and we'll actually be grilling inside. So a lot of people don't have grills, maybe they live in an apartment, or they don't have access to a grill. And I wanna show people that you can grill inside. So that's something we'll be doing on Saturday. So let's go ahead and get started with these cookies. Aubrey, that's my bestie, y'all. She's coming in here. I know you missed my cookies. I'm gonna have to ship you some cookies. I'm gonna have to ship you some cookies to Michigan. She's been missing out, y'all. That's my best. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do first is we're going to cream our butter and everything in here. But I want to go ahead and sift all my dry ingredients just so they're already ready and sitting aside in this bowl. So what I'm going to do, and this is just my Dollar Tree sifter. I'm pretty sure I bought this with Aubrey when I lived back in the borough. Not even gonna lie. 
back in the day. Back in the day. Okay, so we're gonna start with our flour, and I don't even have my measuring cup. Oh my goodness. Really? It's just hanging out. Over here. Yeah, it is. It was just hanging out. It was just chilling in the drain. Oh. Alright, we're gonna start with our flour. And it's two cups of flour. And this recipe yields about 30 cookies. So if that's like way too many cookies for you, first off, I freeze some of them, save them for later. Sometimes Ted eats all of them. I get maybe like eight, maybe. Um, <laughs> but you can freeze them. They freeze really well. You can roll them up in little balls and freeze them, or you can roll it into a nice little roll of parchment and freeze it that way, slice them out, they'll slice bake, does it just great. I've done that too. But it makes about 30 cookies, so you can pack this recipe if that's too many cookies for you. All right, so start off one cup, and it's gonna take two cups of flour, but I'm gonna add the second cup in here after I've sifted a little bit more of the ingredients because I want to get a nice combined layer Yeah, I think it was. I think it was when I was with you and Josh. I think it was. And this thing is just like bent all the heck. But, you know, as long as the wire mesh in your sifter is doing its job, you don't need no fancy pan sifter or you don't need nothing fancy. It'll do the job just fine. As long as it does the job, that's all that matters. Okay. So we need... And I'm a little bit tired, a little bit, didn't get great amount of sleep last night, so I'm a little groggy. So if I stumble on my words or I'm a little slow today, that's why. Everybody gets a little groggy. So I do have chronic fatigue, so sometimes that can mess with things. I'm going to try to rise above and not let it get in the way today. All right, we're going to add in one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. Baking soda. Baking soda. Just wait. So just one. If it ain't broke, use it, right? And I should probably put my apron on so I don't get covered in flour, which I'm sure I've already got some on me. And a half. Yeah. You did that down. You did that down. You're fine. Right. Tosca! Hello! Hi! How is everyone doing today? Basil is currently wanting to look out the window. She's wanting to look out the window because she knows that her food is getting delivered today. She knows that she's got a package coming, so she wants to bark at the delivery person. She doesn't know when they're coming, but she knows they're coming. All right, we're gonna add one teaspoon of salt. And if you're wondering what I'm doing over here, I'm looking back at my recipe. So I have to write stuff down, especially when I'm baking. I always wanna make sure that I'm making the correct measurements. It's good to make sure you've got good level measurements so that you've got an equal chemistry going in. So one teaspoon of salt. Okay. And I like to add fourth a teaspoon 
baking powder. I think that helps give the cookies just a little bit more rise to them, makes them just a little bit more fluffy. Just a little bit. If you're making this recipe at home and your cookies come out really, really flat, it could be one of two things. Either you overmix your batter or where you live, the elevation, things like that. It could happen where you just didn't have enough mixture between baking soda and baking powder. So if your cookies come out way too flat and gooey and they just didn't quite work in incorporating, the next time you make them, if you have a habit of over incorporating or a hand mixer maybe, um, you can always add a little bit more baking soda and a little bit more baking powder. So you could do like half a teaspoon instead of a fourth of baking powder. And you could do maybe um, two teaspoons of baking soda to just try to add some extra lift into your cookies to make them more fluffy. So that would help with that. Cookies are delicious. Cookies are always delicious. If you don't like cookies, come on. All right. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna just kind of sip that a little bit. We're gonna add in our second part of our flour. So that way we've got our two cups in here. Now we're gonna add our cocoa powder. So we're gonna add three fourths of a cup of cocoa powder. I'm gonna grab a spoon here. And my, my cocoa powder is kind of full and a lot of people, you know, the paper just rips and that cocoa powder just, you know, it just comes out and it goes everywhere. And it's hard to get your scoop in there. So what I like to do, sit my measuring cup Y'all can't see a damn good thing. Flowers in the way. Everything's in the way. I'm gonna move everything down. All right. I like to sit my cup on the counter and use a spoon to kind of scrape the cocoa powder down to break it up a little bit, and then put it into the measuring cup. Okay. That way it's not, even though I've still got some on the counter, it's not as bad as if you were to shake this in there. Because if you were to shake this in there, it would be everywhere. Um, I like to sift pretty much everything together. So even though I have some flour here and I have some cocoa powder, I just want to make sure everything is nice and well combined. So even after I sift this cocoa powder in with this flour, I'm going to grab a cup of the mixture and sift it again. And basically what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to make sure everything is well combined and light and fluffy so that way nothing clumps together in the mixture. Because we don't want anything clumping. We don't want clumps. We want it to be nice, light, and airy. But we want to make sure that we're not going to over mix anything in here. And by not over mixing in here, we can make sure that we've got everything well and lightly combined over here. And that's what the sifter really helps by doing. My mom is here! Hi, mom! Hey, Cricket. That's my mama. My mama has joined the stream. Hi, mom. So I'm getting that cocoa powder. And I'm getting my three-fourths of a cup. My one-cup measuring cup has a line in it for a three-fourths cup, so that's what I'm getting to right now. I'm just getting to my three-fourths of a cup. Making sure it's in there right. All right. Now I'm going to put that over the flour. I'm going to sift this in here. 
And that's going to help combine the flour and the cocoa powder together. And you might need to break up some chunks of that cocoa powder depending on how long your cocoa powder has been in your closet or if you live somewhere pretty humid like Tennessee, Virginia, Alabama, Florida, basically anything, you know, in the South. I'm pretty sure the humidity level today is like 75% humidity. We've been basically sitting at about a 90 degrees Fahrenheit temperature. But I will say the humidity in Virginia has not been anywhere near as bad as Tennessee. I remember one summer when I lived with Aubrey and Josh, we had an apartment in Murfreesboro. Okay, this is going. See, sometimes your cocoa powder will clog up like that. And you just want to break it up. You just kind of use your spoon a little bit and press it against the sieve, and that just breaks it up. And this is why we, we sift things, because you would have had those chunks in here, and then you would have had these big pockets of dry cocoa in your cookie, and that wouldn't have been very tasty. Okay, so now we're going to go into our bowl, and we're going to kind of just gently mix that flour with the cocoa. Gonna grab some, pull it up here, sift it back down again. And we're just making sure it's all nice and well incorporated. Because you'll notice if you scrape the bottom of the bowl, you'll get a little bit of a white flour. Okay, so when I lived with Aubrey and Josh. It was one of the hottest summers in Tennessee record. And the guy who lived below them, I'm pretty sure was like a chef or something. So he was always cooking. Always cooking. Like always had his stove on. I swear he had his heat on or something. I don't know. But the AC broke in the apartment and we lived on the second floor. And the outside temperature in Tennessee was about, what was it, Aubrey, like 101, 102? Humidity was like 100%. Inside the apartment, though, was like a field temperature of 110. So we were having some issues. So me and Aubrey decided we're going to make some ice cubes and we're going to chill. So I have this thing where if my feet get really hot, I get very upset. And <clears throat> we decided to put all the ice cubes that we made into the sink. And I proceeded to put my feet in the sink. So I had my feet in the sink with these ice cubes and Josh, I think he had a bad day at work. He's hot, he's tired, he's gotta come home to this hot, sweaty apartment. Storms in the door, and he just goes, what are you doing? Why are your feet in the sink? And he can't even be mad because he's laughing so hard because I'm just sitting there on the counter with my feet in the sink like, hi, my feet are hot. We, we had we had some fun in that apartment that summer but even though it was hot you know we when it rained we'd run outside to go splash in the puddles we made we made do we had all the windows up and fans you know we did everything we could the AC broke so many times in that apartment it was ridiculous should have been like a crime should have been a crime. all right so we've got this well sifted and combined so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna beat our butter and our shortening. And I'm gonna show you guys a shortening, uh, a trick for how to measure out your shortening. But first, I need to get a cup of water. I'm gonna grab a cup of room temperature down. Okay. 
I also need a knife and another spoon. I know, I was my, me with my feet in the sink. Can you imagine coming home and you just see your friend with their feet in the sink with all the ice cubes? I mean, you just, you're just like, what are you doing? It's kind of hard to be mad at somebody when they're that hot that they have to put their feet in the sink. I was fairly certain I had a temperature from that because it was just so hot. All right. So I'm going to show you a trick on how to get shortening measured out equally. So shortening is really hard to get measured out. And this trick was actually taught to me by somebody that does cakes. <coughs> Excuse me. So you put a cup of water in like a, a liquid measuring cup. And you get your shortening. And a spoon. And what we're aiming for here is half a cup of shortening. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to scoop this out and we're going to place it into the thing of this little picture here of water. And we're looking for the water level to rise from one cup of water to one and a half cups of water. So what it's doing is it's raising the volume of water to half a cup. And that lets us know that we've gotten a half a cup of shortening. Because it's really hard to get shortening out of one of these cups. And it's a lot easier to just grab it as a whole out of this one. So we're just going to plop it down in here. Okay, that was a fourth. Almost there. A little bit more. You gotta make sure it's floating in there, you know. All right, so we're at half. So what I did is I just plopped it in there and it got it to a half a cup. Okay. Then we just grab it all out and put it in the mixer. I almost dropped it. That would have been funny. See how much easier it was to get that out of there? Then it would have been to try to scrape the inside of a half cup measuring cup. So much easier. So much easier. All right. So then now, all you got is a dirty spoon. And that measuring cup is a lot easier to clean. So now we're going to beat the butter. I think I like beat something in every single one of my things. First it was the chicken. I was smacking it on the counter, beating the chick, beating the meat on the counter. And then it was the carrots. Now we're going to beat the butter with the mixer. I'm always beating something. This is, this is a very aggressive cooking show. It's very aggressive. All right, so we're going with one and a half sticks of butter. I like to use French butter. That's just personal preference. It's just what I like to do. You want to make sure your butter has had time to soften. So letting it sit out on the counter, maybe like an hour before you decide to start baking with your eggs. That way it gets about room temperature is always great. Makes things so much easier. So we're going for a stick and a half of butter. Like I said, this recipe, not for the faint of heart. Okay. So what I'm doing, I'm just chopping up my butter, making it a little bit easier for when I put it in here to beat with. The shortening. Okay. And all your butter, doesn't matter what kind of butter you get, it's always going to have measurements on it. This one was wrapped wrong, which is hilarious, but it still has some measurements on it, which is funny. But I'm only doing half, so it's literally 
half the butter. But it'll have tablespoon measurements on the inside of the butter, which will tell you how many tablespoons of butter you're looking for. But we're looking at one and a half sticks, so you don't even have to worry about that. Mom, off, rubber. butter can go back in the fridge or the freezer for the next recipe. Alright. Alright. So all we're going to do, we'll put our paddle in here and we're going to beat that butter. Softening it up for the sugar. Just kind of combining that butter with the shortening. Bring you guys a little bit closer here. Do my, my, my vlog camera moves. And I am looking at getting my camera hooked up so that I don't have to do this. So you can see here, we just got it nice and beaten. The next thing we do is we're going to add our sugar. And we're going to cream our sugar in there. Okay? So it's a nice and creamy consistency. Nice and fluffy. Fluffy, base. Nice and fluffy. It's not time yet, Basil. Basil says, is it time? Is it time for me to eat? No. It's not time. It's not time. Get out of your bed. All right. To our blended butter here, we are going to add two cups of sugar. I like to add them half a cup at a time. All right. One. That's one cup of sugar. Okay. Now we're going to turn this up so that it's nice and fluffy. You're going to beat it for about maybe 30 seconds to a minute. Another little camera shot down here. Gonna be doing this a lot today. So you can see the fluffiness. Okay? You see how fluffy that is? It almost looks like a slightly chunky icing. That's what we're going for. Okay? And if y'all saw the dirty dishes in the background, don't mind them. <laughs> It's not like me, I know. All right. Boom. All right, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna scrape our paddle down a little bit here. And we're gonna scrape down our sides. And if you wanted a different kind of comparison here, if you maybe not done icing, if you've ever done really thick, chunky mashed potatoes, or just really thick mashed potatoes, that's kind of the consistency you're looking for. It's like thick mashed potatoes. So once you've creamed your butter and your sugar together, you're looking for something that looks like, you know, thick mashed potatoes. Okay, you can see I've got a spatula here and it's not coming off. We're looking for thick mashed potatoes. 
That's the consistency you're going for. Get down there. Next, we're going to add in our eggs one at a time, and then we're going to add in our vanilla. Lick. No, you don't want to lick that one. That one's just butter and sugar. You crazy? Crazy? All right. And again, paper towel. Crack it. Don't be afraid. Well, that one cracked on the side there. That one was a weird crack. That's my organic eggs. We're just going to turn on low to combine. Get the next one. Oh no! Get in there! That one wanted to run away. He said, I run away! I run away! That's how we have a favorite job. We're going to have to clean that one a little bit more. That one was a run away folks. I don't think I've had an egg run away like that in years. Nothing is being popular this time. Alright. I'm gonna turn that on. Combine them. Till it's almost like a lemony color. Just a real combine. Nice little combining. Maybe again about 30 seconds to a minute. Just getting them nice and combined. And then it's got that nice kind of creamy context texture again. And you'll notice when it goes from liquid to texture. And I'll show you again. It just looks the exact same. It's a nice light color. I'll we'll wash my hands. So I've got a digital SLR camera, and I've been Googling how to do the hookup, but it just didn't happen today. So you can see here, just a little bit more yellow. Nice creamy con texture and consistency. What are everybody's favorite cookies? Does anybody have a favorite cookie they like? Mine's definitely just... Plain old, good American, probably not even American, but I'm calling it American chocolate chip. All right, we're gonna add our vanilla. And we're gonna add in three teaspoons. Of vanilla extract. Yes, Aubrey, I know you love a snickerdoodle. We'll have to do snickerdoodle on the screen. Turn this on low. Two. And three. We are going to grab just a couple things here and put them away because it's getting a little messy. We've got to be able to function. Alright. We're going to scrape down the sides one last time before adding the dry. Cookies. 
cookies are delicious. Everybody loves cookies. Cookies are good. There's this one cupcake shop that's in Hampton that is just friggin' delicious. And I used to go there a lot with my friend Sita after work. And they had this cookie dough cupcake. And the icing on top tasted like cookie dough. Could not get over that. It was quite delicious. They had a bunch of cupcakes. I would get some for Ted, bring them home to him. Demolish them, of course. Ron Phoebus. Ron Phoebus. It's quite delicious. They had one in Newport News as well. All right. So now we're going to add in our dry ingredients to our mixer. Let me just turn this on low. And we're just going to add them in about anywhere from a fourth of a cup to a half of a cup at a time. It's up to you and your judgment. some cocoa powder dust. It likes to do that. I usually like to add in about half of what I see in the bowl so it's combined. Turn the mixer up a bit so it can kind of spin out. Turn it back on low and then add in the rest because it'll tend to kind of clump in the middle there. gets chocolatey real fast. But we want to make sure that we've got all, all those edges, all the bottom and sides and everything well combined. It's going to get me. And you don't want to over, you want to try not to over mix it. Just want to try to get it just combined. You don't want to see any dry clumps, which right now still dry clumps, but what we're trying to do, we're trying to make sure we got all the dry clumps, so that's why we're scraping. Trying to make sure we got all the dry clumps, and getting all the original cookie mixtures. this on again. About medium. Let's spin out. Okay. Got a little bit of stuff here. Making sure everything's good and combined. We'll bring you guys over so you can see the batter. You can see it is thick. Ah! Man. 
in the hole. I'm gonna get everything back in there. Don't want it all splattered in there. I'll save every little bit of dough I've got. Hello, Basil. Oh my goodness. So much cookie dough. Alright. So much vodding today. All right, so this is our combined cookie batter. You can see it's well distributed. Got that one little, one little area where there was like a tiny little dude, but it will get caught because we are about to add the chocolate chips. All right, so you're gonna add Alright, you're going to add one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips, and we're going to add two cups of white chocolate chips. But we're also going to set aside some white chocolate chips to top the tops. We're going to press them down on the tops, and it helps make them look more finished and pretty. So when they come out, you've got some nice little white tops on the cookies. Makes them not look so dirty and, and covered in the goo. It makes them look really pretty. Can you lick the spoon? Lick it. Lick that better. <laughs> all right. So we're gonna start with our. That's not a cup. That's a half a cup. That's a cup. Chocolate chips. No basil. This this recipe is not for you at all. Chocolate is bad for dogs, cats, basically all animals. Keep onions, garlic, and chocolate, and grapes. A lot of people don't know that. Grapes. Away from animals. Beer is also supposed to be bad too. But some people still have done that. Alright. We got one cup of chocolate chips, and we are going to just add them in here. And slowly just mix. And then we're going to add our white chocolate chips. And the white chocolate chips really help balance out all of the chocolate, ironically. For a second, I thought I'd drop one. I was like, oh, they're gonna. I know that was just cocoa butter, but still. And then I still got some down in here in the bottom. There it is. Alright. Alright. So now we have our batter. We are going to put this batter. Scrape down sides. Scrape off our paddle touch here as best we can. We'll cover it in batter. Now, I know a lot of you will be tempted to lick this. Again, I will say, please don't. There's raw egg in it. There's risk of salmonella. Be careful. Also, 
eating raw flour is not good for you. Everyone has always said, oh, salmonella, why are you? But raw flour is not good to eat. Okay. You're like, man, she's a party pooper. What happened to her? All right. Got the paddle. Pretty much. My job. For the most part. Grab our paddle. We're going to wipe down our sides of our bowl best we can so that it's well combined together and just chilling as a mass. We are going to cover this bowl with plastic wrap. We're going to sit in the fridge and it's going to chill for 30 minutes. This is very important. This batter needs to chill. And the reason it needs to chill is because the butter has been beaten warm. It's sitting out on the counter and it needed to in order for it to incorporate correctly. But we need that butter to solidify back up to a crystallized structure. So that way, when it goes into the oven, it doesn't immediately go bleh and flatten out. If you ever have cookies in the oven and they go bleh, we got another follower! Thank you! Oh, that's exciting! Guys, that means we've reached our goal! That means that we'll be at 50! Ah! Oh. That means that we should be at our goal. That's exciting. Live edit. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yay. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. That's exciting. We're gonna cover this with the handed end of plastic wrap. If you have, um, some beeswax paper that works too. I do not have any at this moment, so plastic wrap is what I will be using. It is actually paying attention and doing what I'm telling you to do today, so that's also fantastic. We're going to put this in here. 30 minutes. I'll set a timer. On our stove. For 30 minutes. All right. I'm going to put this back in the fridge. Put our butter up. All right. So now we've got all this sticky mess. That's okay. Don't worry, I'm not going to clean right now. I'm going to do some art with you guys. Cleaning is for later. Cleaning is for later. I will, however, just rinse this one spoon. <laughs> I like that spoon. All right. So what I'm going to do real quick is just make sure I've got enough room over here for when we get ready to scoop said cookies. You guys, that's probably loud. See what I'm doing. Move the mixer over. Actually, I think we've done this before. We'll probably move you guys over here and we'll do it on the stove. We've done that before. Yeah. New goal of 100 now. That's right, Aubrey. That is right. That's exciting. We do have a new goal now. 
put those chocolate chips in the freezer. Ooh. Little lemon! Thank you! Sure I! You guys are raining! Oh! Thank you! <laughs> you guys come in, I just put the I just put the batter in the fridge! Pull it out so you can so you can see the back. It's going in the fridge. We gotta wait 30 minutes for it to chill, at least. More would be better. More is always better. So you wanna make sure that the crystalline structure in the butter and the fat has had time to meld and chill with the flour, so that way when you put it in the oven, it doesn't go and melt out. You want to make sure it's got a nice good time to chill. Oh, that mixer is covered in so much chocolate. Yes. Shout out to Shurai. Shurai is awesome. Shurai is the one who got me hooked. Hooked on Twitch. We'll call it hooked on Twitch. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna get this guy out of here. And then we're gonna do some art, y'all. We're gonna do some art, y'all. I'm from the south, I can say it. Y'all. We'll put all these other guys up later. I know I keep saying, like, oh, I'll do it later, I'll do it later, and I just keep touching things. I can't stop. I can't stop. All right. Give me just a moment, guys. Put some music on for you here. Oh dear. Hello. Oh, wrong one. Hello. Oh no. Don't you dare. Started growling. So I just heard thunder. Um. Hopefully. The power does not go out because that would be awful right now. I put Basil's floofy bed up in a chair <laughs> so that she can participate. So we are continuing on our artwork. It's just like going to be a continuation until we get things done. Uh, the artwork that I submitted for my entry into Art Abilify is behind me. Some of you guys have seen this before. Ooh. So that's what I submitted for Artabilify. It's an organization with the Briar Ma Brian Mar Rehab Hospital and Facilitation, and they do um, art shows for any individuals who have had disabilities, and they help promote artists with disabilities. So they're really a wonderful, wonderful group. Uh, 
Um, thank you, Ross. I appreciate that. Thanks, Jack Girl. So hopefully that uh, that artwork gets picked to be a part of the show. I've been in one of the shows before and it's sold. Um, my painting sold, so hopefully uh, we'll get the same results again because that would be nice because then we can have a mic for streaming here so that you guys can hear me better uh, when I'm walking around the kitchen and everything. Maybe get a light. Um, get, get some better stuff for streaming for you guys. Basil's like, I'm not happy. My food is not coming. I'm waiting on my food. You like the bunny? You're not amused. So we've been working on this lemon picture. And we haven't gone very far, hardly at all. Um, but we're gonna keep continuing because what we wanna do, so we're gonna keep at it. Is the music too loud, guys? Snap. Aubrey is another, uh, Scott, Sky Bree is another IRL friend. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I keep hearing thunder. I am so worried that it's just going to go out and I'm like, Ooh. I'd be like, mobile hotspot. It probably would be horrible though. Music is good. Okay. Awesome. Music is actually, um, made by my best friend Levi. Uh, and this is what he calls indie alt rock. Uh, this, he literally titled this song Indie Alt Rock. Uh, this is just like a mix that he's created. He, he's done some mixing. Um, he's got a couple of different songs. He hasn't uploaded them anywhere yet, but he did give me permission to use them, so I'm very thankful for that. All right, let's just, let's just dive on in. So I've been wanting to do this green for a while. Let me get my artwork up here so I can see it. I don't know if that would you guys see it. I want to see the art. That's kind of important. Alright. So I want to work on this leaf because it's driving me nuts. Last time I did really boring, I was just doing all the white, and I was like, oh, that's not really fun. Right, let's get some green. Mix in some colors here. So we can start doing some value. And it'll be nice when I finally get my camera hooked up because then you guys can see like directly above what I'm doing. So that way you'll have a shot of what I'm actually doing on the artwork. That'll be very helpful too for cooking in this. I have my camera, I just working it out. Still just working it out. Gotta get the kinks figured out. <laughs> Ginger power unites. <laughs> Dark side is strong with this one. <laughs> yes, Aubrey is my best ginger. She is my best ginger. I'm not laying down some bases in front of me. So a lot of times with watercolors, it's hard to do just a single, like if you were to just do a start to finish painting with watercolor. With acrylic, you can kind of just go with it. Oil, a lot of times you have to do start to finish. Um, it's hard to do layers. Oil, you have to wait for it to dry because it's always you know, really wet. 
Um, watercolor, again, you know, it's wet, but you gotta wait for it to dry. But watercolor does dry fast. So you can start working in one little corner while the other corner is drying, and then go back to that corner and then come back to this part. So that part's really, you know, it makes it a little bit easier or more helpful. If you're somebody who's wanting to get started in doing art, um, watercolor isn't nearly as forgiving. So I always say start with acrylic. Um, or, you know, you maybe want to try sketching. But I always say start with acrylic. People are always like, why would you recommend somebody, you know, go out and try acrylic? I'm like, well, there are lots of, plenty of cheap acrylic sets. You could buy, you know, nice little reeds. Reeds is, I mean, I'm using reeds watercolors right now, I mean, for goodness sakes. And they've lasted me forever. But you can get just like a cheap little reeds acrylic kit. These are watercolor ones, but you can get a reeds acrylic kit at like Michael's, or Hobby Lobby. My dad's actually a store manager at Hobby Lobby, so I'm going to say Hobby Lobby, I'm sorry. Sorry, Mom. Sorry, Dad. Go to Hobby Lobby. You can get a Hobby Lobby brand. And just try. Because the nice thing about acrylic is it's so forgiving. You mess up, it's not a big deal. You paint over it. Watercolor, not so forgiving. It leaves out. Like, I've got a couple bleed spots on the top of that leaf. I don't know if you can see it. Go right. There. You don't have to draw and be, you know, you don't have to be able to do this, to do realism. Back here is expressionism. You know, this is a great example. This right here was a pour. So I started with a pour painting and then I painted on top. So this was a pour art. So what you do is you take acrylic paint, you pour it on top of a painting. And I'd never done pour art after, it was after college I started doing that. I've never done pour art before. And I did it with my friend Levi Gorchuk's mom, Susan Rowland. And we did some pour paintings and we let it dry. And then this is what I painted on top of that. So I've got acrylic kind of covering up. And what I did is I just highlighted the certain areas of the pour painting art that I liked. And I was able to go through and be like, oh, okay. I liked this part, so I highlighted this part, and I'm like, oh, I like this part, so I kind of outlined it with some black, and then you're just like, well, I like this color, so I'm going to go through here, and you're like, I see some motion and some fluid, I want to emphasize that. You don't have to know how to do a stick figure, or how to do a circle, or a perfect square to be able to do art. You just need to know what you want to communicate to somebody, and as long as you know what you're trying to communicate, and you have the ability to communicate that, then you can work on that and make it happen. You just gotta have the inspiration to do it. The greatest gift you can give someone is the gift of inspiration. And as long as you're inspired, that is one of the greatest paths that you can go down to start doing painting. And I think that's always a great relief. And if you're, even if you're not inspired, even if like, you know, I'm really depressed, I'm not feeling good, it's a great outlet. And that's a lot of what I did to begin with with art. It was how I relieved, you know, how was I feeling with surgery pains and a lot of my fibromyalgia pains and things. So it was a great way to relieve stress. And I just basically threw paint onto a canvas and then was like, I like this one. So I'm going to keep this area and then start painting more on that area. And sometimes I'd mess up over an area that I liked. And I was like, well, all right, I messed that up. Oh, well. So just, you know, take progress photos as you go. A painting is never really finished. It just stops in interesting places. So that's the way it is, especially with abstract art. You know, it's all about expression. And that's what I love about art. Sorry, I kind of went on a little bit of a tangent. <laughs> All right, so I'm just painting some things. And some days you might be better at painting than other days. Um, 
my husband doesn't agree with that, but you know, some days I feel like my skill level is a little better than other days. That's okay, you know. Happens to the best of us. Some days, you know, you're just not having a good day. It's just not working out right. That's totally fine. Sometimes it's nice to just sit down and just put color on a paper. Even if you're doing like a coloring book. That's fun too. No shame. I've done it. Color pencils are a lot of fun, yeah. They make watercolor pencils too, which are really cool. So like if you're blending and you're just like, I can't get this to work. So you can do like watercolor pencils and then go back and just blend it with the water. And this song by Levi is called My Song Free. So I'm just kind of going in and just adding a little bit more color and some shading to different places. Basil, you're not very active. You're being very, very lazy, lady. You're being so lazy. Because I'm just sitting in a bed. You're not even, I think you're not even in the shot. I think you're like... No, you are. Bye, Face Punch. Thanks for, thanks for hanging out and joining the stream. I appreciate you stopping by. kind of added some more just some general layers in there. My paintbrush is like shedding because it's a cheap paintbrush. It's old. It's been sitting in water. <laughs> I'm just like pulling the layers of it off of it. I have better ones I could use but I'm just stuck in my ways with my watercolor paintbrushes. I can still see it's a number three. That's all that matters. <laughs> as long as I'm not getting a splinter, that's all I really care about. It's like, it's not like dirt. I don't know if anybody caught that. I was like flinching. All right. 
We got some good, some good basis on that. Our skins. Oh, salvage the herbs. Hello, hello, salvage the herbs. Thank you, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. So excited that we reached our goal today. That's gonna to be so nice to go in on the analytics and read all the fun stuff. What am I doing? It'll be really nice. I'm excited for all that. It's like for for what comes next. This green is way too green. It needs to be more. If you ever get like too much of one color, you can lay down water. And then dab it away. Gotta wait. Go back to that for a while. All right. Let's do. Do some lemon work. Okay, love you, mom. Bye, mom. <laughs> so we're just kind of going around the other lemon at this moment. And honestly, because this other lemon has so much white, I'm going to go ahead and gently pull up some of these erase, these kind of like gentle sketch lines that I did earlier. Because there's so much white in there, I don't want it to pick up the pigment from it. So it looks like this lemon over here. It's kind of like a nice light yellow base. And then it's got some nice kind of veining in there, which when you think about a lemon and when the light hits it, it's kind of got some veining, which is kind of cool. Okay, thanks, Ashwin. Hey. Yes, I don't smell any paint. Yes. We're waiting for cookies to chill, and then we're going to put them on a sheet and then bake them. Right now, we should be getting close to the buzzer coming off pretty soon. Uh, the brand is Reeves. R-E-E-V-E-S. Reeves. Just Reeves watercolor paint. I've also got some uh, Windsor Newton in here as well. Uh, the thing about watercolor paint is it lasts a really long time. Um, so, But the majority of a lot of these are Reeves. Or Reeves paint. It's cheap, but you know what? If it gets the job done, that's all that matters to me. Nope, 
Definitely watercolor. Watercolor, yeah. As I say, I have one in this, but I don't ever use it, but yeah, that's the name brand. <laughs> I was like, I don't ever use this one, but that's the name brand. I use this, well, have I ever used this? I think I used it, like, once when I was, I used to go, like, out in nature and do some stuff sometimes. Yeah, like, it's a good, it's a good brand, and it, you know, and it lasts a long time, it's, it's very affordable, you can find it in most craft stores, um, and that's one of the things that's nice about it. And I probably could have, like, you know, sliced up a linen, took a picture, and painted that. I'll probably do the picture that I took of my blueberry muffins. I just, I hadn't done anything in a while, and I just kind of wanted to pull something and just go with it to see what I got. There's our one-minute timer warning. I'm just kind of getting a light... a light texture down on that lemon. All right, go have a good lunch. Liz and Shirai, thank you guys. Thank you for the raid. Thank you guys for coming and stopping by. I appreciate it so much. Yes, salvage herbs, it is good pigmentation. Reeves does have good pigmentation. That's one of the reasons why I do like them is you're not sitting there like, Constantly, especially for the tube paints. They have great pigmentation, and I appreciate that. A lot of watercolors, sometimes the pigmentation is just not there. It's, it's just not good enough. And I do appreciate that Reeves puts a lot of pigment into their, their watercolors, especially their tube paints. And that's something I appreciate. All right, guys, we are going to switch back here. So here's where we are right now. And we're going to switch back to our cooking. And we are going to scoop out them cookies. Probably hear me walking around the kitchen and you're like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Alright. Alrighty. So now we are back here. We've got our dough, which has chill. Now, I do technically have a cookie scoop, but my cookie scoop last time had a battle with this dough. And cookie scoop 
kind of got angry. I didn't really want to work. And not a lot of people have a cookie scoop. So we are going to forego the cookie scoop today. I know, I'm crazy. I'm being a rebel. Rebel without a cause. We're gonna go ahead and set our oven to 350, preheating. We're gonna grease up. That was loud, I apologize, I apologize. It's Pam! Yes, we're gonna grease up our cookie sheet. Basil's just sitting in her chair I'm like, okay, mom. All right. Just gonna wipe this down so it's nice and greased up. Okay. I'm even gonna do it to the spoon here. In fact, I'm gonna grab a second spoon. Do the same. All right. We got this, guys. Got this. Actually, I might be able to. Whoa. Yeah, a little better. All right. We're gonna open up our cookie dough, which is chilled a little bit. We're gonna scoop out about a tablespoon size. You could use an actual tablespoon to measure it if you wanted to. Ice cream scoops are great. That's what mom has always used. This is technically a lovely scooper. I am you know what? We're going to use it until it craps out on us. How about that, guys? We'll use it till it craps out. Scoop it, and it just goes down. I hear my husband screaming in the background. I'm not sure what he's screaming about. Could be his poison ivy. Ted is poison ivy really bad. Uh, he was pulling some vines in the yard, and I said, hey, what are you doing? Because he's going outside with flip-flops, shorts, and short sleeves. And I was like, um, what you doing, bud? He says, I'm going to go pull some buns. And I was like, you should put some pants and long sleeves and tennis shoes on. Said, no. I was like, okay. His arms, legs, even part of his stomach is covered in, like, poison ivy boils. So, but he's on steroids now, so it's starting to get better. We're just going to scoop these out and just space them apart. About as many as you think you can get on there. I could probably do just some less ones there, let's be honest. Make it a little more messy. Come on, Scoop. Not dead yet. Not quite dead yet. There we go. All right, now here comes the trick. All right. Now what you want to do is you want to grab your bag of chocolate chips. You want to take them, point you side down, and press them into the top of your cookies. What that'll do is give you some nice looking cookies for when they come out. You can vary how many you put into each one. I like to do anywhere from one to three.
And you don't have to do this, but I just think it's nice to have that nice little presentation on there. And as well as having that nice clean chocolate chip on top. It makes them look better. I don't necessarily know if it makes them taste better, but I feel like it does. All right. Now, while this is going to continue to preheat, you have a couple options here. We can pop this back into the fridge while we wait. Or, yeah, I don't know what it is with guys thinking they're indestructible, but apparently they do. And then when they're sick, they get the guy cold. <sighs> All right. I'm going to put this in the fridge. I'm going to put my cookie dough. Let's do another sheet tray. Put this in the fridge. what happens when your fridge is too full. And you make too much food. Okay. I'm going to grab another cookie sheet tray and do it again. Cookie scoop, work. Might be able to get more on this. I don't know. I just don't want the cookies to oh, bubble over the edges, you know? And there's our oven, ready to go. All right. We'll grab the other cookies. And we're gonna place these guys in the 350 degree oven. Mine. Lord have mercy. Brain fart. Give me a minute. <laughs> for mine, I do mine for 12 minutes. But you can bake them anywhere from 8 to 12 minutes. 8 minutes would be super gooey, fall apart, almost like dough. 12 minutes is like a good, nice uh, cookie that's got some crumble to it. 10 minutes, a little bit more chewy. And it always depends on your oven, you know. Everybody's oven is going to be different. We'll put this dough back in the fridge. Put my scoop in the sink. My chips back in the freezer. 
and we're going to see you guys back at the artwork. The recipe is actually already on the Discord. So if you join our Discord, one of my mods can do a Discord shout out. And I post it before. So I usually post it the night before. So if somebody wants to, you know, maybe get the ingredients and cook along with me, they can. Got a glitch. We have an alert glitch. Don't know how to make it not glitch anymore. <laughs> Let me see if I move it. I don't know. Are y'all getting the glitch too? Where you can see the Twitch alert over here? The previous Twitch alert from Savage to Herbs. <laughs> I'm probably gonna switch, um, cause right now I'm doing Twitch Studio Beta, so I'll probably switch to one of the other ones. I do have OBX already on my computer, but just depends on what my, uh, yeah, you broke it. My best friend broke it the other day, so you're fine. Um, <laughs> my, my IRL best friend Megan broke it the other day, and there was a fish head stuck up there, and I was like, why is there a fish head? So, it is totally fine. Uh, don't even worry about it. Just feel, just feel special with your name up there, my new edition. <laughs> That one's gonna be pretty soon. You wagging your tail? You wagging your tail? It's all good. Hi. You like your throne? You like your throne? You like your throne? Do you want tree? Do you want a tree? No, 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 you're not dropping down. You're staying in your seat. Is that what we should be doing? Should we be giving Basil time? How old is Basil? Basil is five years old. Here, let's go to here. And hold on, Basil. Each second here. Stay, stay in your bed. Stay in your bed. You goofy. I got you like a taco. <laughs> nope. It Ooh, that was probably rough. I apologize. Come 
little basil. I need to switch something here. It's like every time, you never know if you need it in your life, but sometimes you just need a corgi blade break. You just need a corgi blade break. Sometimes you just need a corgi blade break. Get that creeper. Get that creeper. Don't break it to me. Double life of a Gordy mom. Oh my gosh. She does that so much. It's like to boop them. Think it's funny. You think it's funny, huh? Last thing we want is the computer to die. <laughs> Move that Christmas rug! Move it! Move it! Move it! <laughs> I know! I need to get another one off. Everybody keeps teasing me. They're like, 
Why do you have a Christmas? Well, I guess I don't have another one, okay? The last one got ruined. Alright, our timer went off. I know, she's got great moves, doesn't he? She's got great moves. You got some slick moves, boys. Alright, the timer went off for the cookies. So it's about to be cookie reveal. The light just got brighter. Okay, do you want to see the cookies? The cookies are about to come out, Aubrey. The buzzer just went off. If you want to see the cookies, I have to pull them out. It's the countdown. It's the final countdown. Alright. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ah! <laughs> oh my goodness. They popped up. It's the pen. Alright. Okay. These little ones, they melded together. They said, we're going to have friends. We're going to be cookie friends. We're going to melt together. So we're going to let them sit here on the pan. Turn the oven off. Let them sit here on the pan, just kind of cool for a minute. And then, that's my favorite one. There it is. And then we will scoop them off and place them onto a rack to cool. And they might come out of the oven a little puffy, but they'll deflate a little bit when you bring them in. If you drop them real hard like I did on this one, they'll drop, so you gotta be a little careful. I accidentally slammed that one on the counter a little too hard, so it kind of dropped out. These ones are still the correct height. But, you know, you got a nice, good-looking cookie right there. Mmm. Oh, cookie. There's your cookie, Aubrey. Get you the cookie. Nom, nom, nom. There you go. <laughs> Love you, Aubrey. <laughs> Alright, so I'll let them cool for a second. I'm gonna hydrate. Gonna grab my water. All in the vein. So it thundered a little bit, but it never actually, never actually um, did anything. So nom nom nom. I'm glad you enjoyed that, Aubrey. Send it to you, please. Okay. <laughs> Text me your address. Send you some cookies. Bye! Alright, you guys. We're gonna let them cool just for a minute. You hungry? You hungry? <laughs> I was like, your Mac, your Mac will sleep soon unless plugged into a power outlet. That's why I plugged you in, Mac. Don't you dare go to sleep on me. Well, Basil, your food's still not here yet, but we do have some of your other food still left over. Can you give me what's in here? And it's going to arrive. Give me the rest of that. But I don't like when auto ship doesn't show up when it's supposed to. Because it's not hurting me, but it's hurting Basil. What's your thought? Hopefully they bring your food soon. Because uh, we live so far out and there's not... Uh, her dog food isn't, like, available where we live. So I have to order it from Chewy.com. But it said it was going to be delivered today. So hopefully FedEx and whoever it comes through doesn't disappoint me today. You better not. I'll have a very, very upset Corgi.
or a very happy corgi because I'm not going to let her starve, obviously. I'm going to feed her food, just won't be a dog food, so. <laughs> she will get food. Yeah. Hungry! Yeah. Alright. I think those have cooled possibly long enough. Let's, uh, come over here. Gotta keep you guys plugged in. So I can scoop these cookies and put them on the tray. And then we will do a cookie crumble and a dunk. Because you gotta make sure that the cookie holds up, crumbles properly, and meets taste of approval. Oh no, that one already crumbles. That one's already crumbling right off the pan. There's our crumble one already. Mm. Um. <laughs> Kitchen cookies. That one really flattened out. It only flattened out because I accidentally slammed the pan. I'm so mad at myself that I slammed the freaking pan. The pan was like, wham! And these cookies will be even puffier the next day because the batter will have time to have set for 24 hours in the fridge. So it'll be even fluffier. Just enough for to put them all on there, I think. Yeah. Including the one that fell to smithereens. Just that one. Yum. Alrighty. <laughs> Got our cookies. Might do a picture of them like that because they look pretty. Mm -hmm. They are. They are a little backed up because of uh, COVID and everything, so it has been taking them a little bit longer. Uh, that's why I signed up for auto ship, so that way, um, hopefully, her food would, would come when it needed to. Um, but uh, I guess I didn't plan it right, because her auto ship is basically, like, right when she runs out of food, and I need it to not be like that. I need it to be before she runs out of food. Um, so it did not quite work out the right way. Not quite the right way. All right, so let's get a glass here. Sorry if I offend anyone with my lactate, lactose free milk, but. So we got a crumbled one because we know it's going to crumble. That one's already crumbled. <laughs> that one just like fell apart. The other ones were fine, but that one was just like not having it. That was actually kind of funny. All right, I'm gonna go for this guy. We got good cookie crumbles as needed, but you've also still got a good hold up of a cookie as you need it. And of course, the don't. No. Oh no! There we go. Just barely fits. Mmm. I got milk on me. <laughs> the 
job. Good job. Totally worth it. Worth every second. I'm not some fancy chef. I'm not some cute little cutesy person. I'm a regular person who happens to like food, make food, and enjoy food. It's over. It's fine. Got the cookies. Got the milk. Mm. No. <laughs> All right, these are delicious. They are yummy. I'm gonna go share them with Ted. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's stream. Oh my goodness, gotta have that milk. They're very rich and chocolatey. Again. If you guys join our Discord, let's see here. Ah. We have the recipes there, so you can click that link, go to our Discord. I post every recipe the day before uh, we make the stream. I'm gonna do a 4th of July uh, stream. We're gonna do burgers and hot dogs inside and show you guys great ways to make those meals. We're also gonna make french fries from scratch. Show you guys how to do that with a mandolin. Um, also, slice them up, you know, if you don't have a mandolin as well, I'll show you that as well. Um, we're gonna do, you know, just a good old, great way to make some food. Maybe if you don't have a grill, it's a great op opportunity to show you how you can cook something with some cast iron. So, we're gonna give you some good tips and tricks on Saturday, so be sure to tune in then. Uh, we'll probably do We'll probably do maybe one o'clock then. Um, we might do maybe two o'clock or later. Um, I'll have to talk it with Ted, see what time he wants to eat. <laughs> so that'll depend on what time you should. But thank you guys for coming around today. Come here, Baze. Uh oh. That's the only way I'm gonna get her in here right now. I tricked you. I tricked you. You can't have those. Those are chocolate. No. No, those are chocolate. You can't have them. No. All right, thank you guys for joining us today. <laughs> Stop! I hope you guys had fun. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Thank you guys for the new follows. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope you guys come and stick around for the next time. We, we love to goof off and try new things. We're going to be doing some new recipes in the future, so that'll definitely be fun. So thank you guys again for hanging out with us today, and I hope you all have a great rest of the week. And... Happy Canada Day to all my Canadian friends. <laughs> Bye, guys.